You're listening to Field Day with Katie Black. Yes. Okay, you guys. Welcome to Field Day with Katie Black. I have a very special guest. Do you want to go ahead? I think it's powerful when the guests introduce himself. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Tony Horn, uh, All-Pro Super Bowl champ, former team, St. Louis Rams, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Clemson Tigers. Woo! You know, my um, my parents met in grad school at Clemson. Fun fact. We family. That's right. That's right. So I always ask people this. Tell everybody where you were gr- where you were born slash where you grew up. I was born in uh, New York, but I grew up in uh, Rockingham, North Carolina, um, right outside of Charlotte. So uh, a lot of people knew it was the uh, home of the Motor Speedway back then. So Rockingham, North Carolina. Very cool. And so how did how did your family move from up north down to NC? I mean, it, we, we did it like I was kind of I was probably like 10, 10 at the time or whatever. But um, most of that's where, you know, we originally originated from down south. So, you know, it probably was best for us to go, go back you know, back to North Carolina. No, I hear that. I'm, I'm born and raised here as well. So, um, well, first off, I ask people this, no matter what their occupation is, but especially with athletes, at what point in your youth were you, were you like, I'm really good at football? I mean, um, well, to be honest, my mother didn't let me play football until I was like in the seventh grade. I was actually a great soccer player. So I played soccer for 10 years, but I always knew I wanted to play football. I knew when I was, I knew I was good at football, like when I was small, just playing in the backyard. And so I always knew I was good, but my mother just wouldn't let me play. And was she just concerned that it was just too violent? Nah, I was real small. So she was like, you're too small, you too little. So I didn't get to play like Pee Wee or you know, travel football, like a lot of kids, you know, when they grow, you know, when they was, when they yeah. started playing early age. So I did, I played soccer instead, but you know, uh, that, that's my favorite sport. I love soccer. How fascinating you are. Like I said, I mean, this is, by the way, if you guys are listening, this is obviously, I'm a few episodes in to this, my new show field day, but you are actually the third um, athlete that I have talked to where you can play two different sports. I feel like that's amazing. I mean, I I played every sport. Like I was good at baseball. I was good at basketball. Like I was good at track. You know, I was just, I was just an athlete, period. A God-given talent, especially when it sounds like you can kind of do it all. Right, right. But I I think like if soccer was big, big back then, I think I probably would have played soccer and everything that's like like I said that's my favorite sport and out of 10 years I lost like one game in 10 years oh my goodness so um I I just I just (laughs) I I love that and it's it's fascinating and amazing at the same time so 18 different directions we can go per usual which I always say but um okay so with you at what point did you transition from soccer to Football, was it when you were allowed to play in the seventh grade? Yes, but I didn't stop playing. I mm-hmm. continued to play uh, football. I played, I played soccer up until the ninth grade upon entering high school. But, like, you know, doing the, I played soccer even when I played football in the seventh grade. So, you know, I, I continued to play. Oh my goodness. And another weird question that I have that might not be weird is, so since you're just, you know, an all around athlete, um, at some point, do they, anyone, whether it's, you know, in high school or obviously when you get to Clemson, does anyone kind of talk to you about your diet? Mm, Man, listen, like, I didn't even know what a diet was. I mean, like, I was real, (laughs) I was small. So when I went to Clemson, I was like 158. So I was like super small, like. Mm-hmm. So once once I got to Clemson, we started eating three meals a day, but it really wasn't like you know a, I mean a diet plan because I mean they catered to us what they wanted us to eat, so it wasn't like we had 
you know, big choices or whatever. So I really didn't, I really didn't get into like a diet plan or nutrition plan until I got to the NFL. Interesting. I'm just, I'm, I'm a fixture of culture and the way people eat and interact and socialize. So that is a question that I'm just fascinated by. So So growing growing up, um, my grandmother, we had gardens back in the day. So I did eat like a lot of vegetables and fruits or whatever. So I did, I I guess you can, you can say I ate healthy, not even knowing. (laughs) Well, what a gift, right? Right, right. You, pl- you start to obviously get into football. And then at what point do you realize, like, is it, you know, for those that don't know, do you apply to Clemson? Do P- do they reach out to you? How does Clemson come into your life? Well, I always wanted to go to Clemson. Even when I was a little kid, when I was like 10 years old, on Saturdays, I would see the guys rub the rock and run down the hill. So I always told everybody, I'm going to Clemson. I'm going to Clemson. So I always knew I wanted to go to Clemson. And but I actually got a scholarship in track for the hurdles at Clemson. So I, I was the state champion in the hurdles. So actually, even though Clemson was, was, was recruiting me, I actually got a scholarship in track. And so Clemson football team, they matched the scholarship because like I think for track, it was only like a two year scholarship. And so the football step, stepped in and gave me a full ride. So basically, I went to Clemson like on a two scholarship deal. Oh my goodness. How amazing. So while you were at Clemson or just even college in general, what was that experience like for you? I mean, it was, it was different because I had a rough background. I had a rough, like, I, I had a rough, I don't know. I was just, I was, I was one of them kids that was always into something. Uh, so Clemson was different for me. It was just different because, like, I don't know. I mean, it was, like, culturally it was different. Uh, Racial-wise, it was different. Uh, It it was just a different experience, you know, being away from home, being on your own, and, you know, basically have to provide for yourself. But, like, once you're on scholarship, then, you know, it's really really no help or nothing like that. You really got to live on your own, basically. Did you – I guess essentially, were you were you homesick at all? Uh, most definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> You're like no. <laughs> I was homesick because like Atlanta was like an hour and a half down the street, so it was like it was, it was like I, I was a grown man, but I wasn't a grown man, and and you know I had I met great people, I met a uh, great group group of guys, and you know I I love this experience. I didn't really want to go back home at all. That's awesome to hear. So from my research, and correct me if I'm wrong, while you were there was the coach Tommy West? Yes, Tommy West. I love that dude. (laughs) Good man. Very cool. What was it, again, like, and again, this can go into obviously what we'll get into in a second, like the NFL. So for those that, you know, are not athletic or have not reached to that, you know, success level, what is it like being on a field when you know everyone is watching you and there's cameras there and – all of that. I mean, to me, I didn't, I didn't think nothing of it. But to me, football was like my rest haven. Like that's what I could. That's where I felt like I could be me. So for me, football, I didn't even look at it as entertaining or you know um, the the fans or you know how many people was watching. I just looked at it as a rest haven. I felt safe. I could, you know, let it all out and I could just have fun. That's awesome. Well, and I guess too, I guess as you should, right? Like you're supposed to just kind of focus and block out everything else, right? Much, yeah. I mean, you know, that that, that was just me. I never, I don't really care about pressure. So, you know, it was normal for me. That's amazing. Did you, um, before we get into NFL, as far as the college goes, did you suffer any kind of crazy injuries? Um. I didn't, but I ended up having a broke bone in my neck that I never knew about. So, you never, I mean, I don't know if it came from college or what. So I didn't suffer like, I mean, uh, uh, ACL or, you know, uh, uh, an injury that put me out for, you know, a certain amount of time. So, no, I made it. 
what do you like how long do you, is there any estimated guess how long your neck was you know messed up before you realized or no idea I had no idea to be honest I had no idea that is just is that just because you know no one is like hey we need to obviously you're not going to go get an x-ray of your neck because you felt like right I mean going on. right I mean I guess if you're not complaining about it and if you don't feel like anything is wrong then you know no, you know, it, it's not every day you just go and, okay, we're going to take an MRI or a CAT scan of your neck. So, you know, if we didn't complain about it, yeah, you know. I dig. Yeah. Now, last question before we get into NFL. Do you, at the college level, is there a lot of um, shit talking? You know what I mean from the opposing team? Mm, I was a talker. <laughs> <laughs> so you I were the shit talker, talker, huh? I mean, I was, it really wasn't a spit talk. It was just like, I mean, I, I just talked a lot. Was, I would be hyped, so I just talked, talked a lot, and I was like a bully on the field, so, you know, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel you. I don't think it was like disrespectful talk. It was just more like, okay, you better step the game up on coming or, you know, competitive, something like that. Absolutely. So obviously you, you know, at, at what point you obviously you leave Clemson and then do you directly go with the Rams or how, what was that transition like? Yeah, I got off. Uh, well, I, I thought I was supposed to get drafted, but things didn't work out that favorable. So I signed as a, a free agent with the Rams and uh, that, that was it. Like, you know, uh, they called me right after the draft and said they want to fly me in and bring me in so i went to st louis and i signed the deal and what was that in a nutshell what was that experience like it was crazy because like i remember being i, re I remember reading uh sports illustrated so they had the rams coaching staff in sports Il illustrated and i'm talking about he coach was like 70 80 years old like older than the normal coaching staff you know so i'm like man Please, God, don't let me go to this team. I hope I don't go to this team with all these old coaches. And that's why I ended up at. So that that was like, that, that was crazy. That was the experience itself. But I love St. Louis. St. Louis was a great city. I've actually, I've never been. In, like, what is it? What is it like? Man, it's dangerous. Put it like that. Now, it's mm -hmm. very dangerous. But me, I, I mean, I loved it because, you know, the, the fans was, it was great. Best fans in the world. They supported us when we was winning, we was losing. It, I mean, it was it was a lot to do in St. Louis, other than being dangerous. It was, it was a fun city. Like 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 they say, New York city that doesn't sleep. St. Louis don't sleep. St. Louis <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, St. Louis something to do with every day. And you know they had some good food restaurants out there, so that was that was a big part of it. Also, how interesting. I love that. I'll have to. Definitely, it's on my bucket list to go one day. Playing, yeah. you know, at Clemson, and then you're playing same sport, but in an NFL umbrella. Is there any difference? Oh, most definitely. Like, the game is faster. Everybody's like, mm, I'm not really going to say bigger, because there were some big kids in college, but, like, the game is definitely faster, and, like, the plays is different. Like, the playbook, studying the playbook, like, muscle memory like that's the plays because you would in training camp man you probably would put in like 50 to 60 plays a day and so and it's not going backwards I mean there's different plays you put in every day so you got to remember all of these plays so that it, it was a big difference like playbook wise and just focus wise like you had to study more you know what I'm saying with the NFL and in college it was like it was, you know, it was like, you get it. Once you get it, you got it. And uh, like I tell people, like, NFL is like 90% mental, mental and 10% physical. Like, you study more than anything. Like, if we have to be to work at like 7, 30, 8 o'clock. We're in the classroom for like six to seven hours. And you're probably on the practice field for the most two hours. So basically, it's like studying the playbook, going over plays, and watching film. So it's definitely more mental. How, yeah. 
I'm just trying to like, I'm just marinating on it. So did what were, again, going back to, was it the same experience as far as like what you said about being on the Clemson field where you just kind of, you don't pay any mind to the background noise, the fact that it's being filmed, you're just completely zeroed in. Yeah, I mean, you just the same thing, but like college had more fans than NFL. So that, you know, that was different. But NFL, I mean, you know, you like, you at the top of the food chain right now. Like, you know, it's, it, it, it's not different, but it's different, you know? I understand. Right. Now, um, before just specifically focused on St. Louis, was there any injuries there that, you know, made a lasting impression essentially? Yeah. I had split my sesame bone in half. Uh, it's like called turf toe. It's, it's, it's the injury that in the Deion Sanders career. And it's the injury that, uh, in the Shaquille O'Neal career. And it's called a sesame bone. Actually, that's what it's called a sesame bone. And most people in life have one set of one ball. And mm. for some reason, I had two. So mine split in half. Like oh. on a Monday night playing Washington Redskins. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and I was in a cast for like six months. I had to learn how to run and all of that over again. So that was, that was, that was, that was an injury that kind of derailed my career, to be honest. And – I'm just, oh my goodness. So, and obviously was it, did, you know, I hear with injury sometime, did you hear it before you felt it or was it the opposite? Oh yeah, it was definitely, we was playing on a Monday night game. We was playing on a Monday night and I was uh, returning the kickoff return. So the kickoff turn before I fumbled the ball. So the, the next one after they scored like a field goal, I went back on the field and I got another kickoff return and we was playing on turf. So once <laughs> I caught, all it took off, I heard it pop. So it popped, but my momentum was so so high, I ran to like the 60 yard line and I just, I couldn't move anymore, I just fell out. So yeah, I, I heard it before, when it happened. Do you feel like what, give or take, what, what year was that? That was, it was after we won the Super Bowl. So it was like 2001, 2001, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, well, not to, obviously before, you know, I want to, I love to dissect everything, but I don't know if this can be real quick, but like, obviously, what was it like going to the Super Bowl? Like the ultimate game? And again, that was my childhood dream. Like I always told people I'm going to the Super Bowl. I'm going to win a Super Bowl. But it, it, man, that was the greatest feeling in the world. So that's that's why you play the game to get a Super Bowl ring. But not only did I go to the Super Bowl, I was the Super Bowl capped. So I got a chance to go out on, you know, the field for the coin toss. And, man, like, how many guys can say they were Super Bowl capped? So, you know, that, that was – now, there you know, like, now that was nervousness. Like, that was the only game I was nervous because, you know, you got, like um, – the, the entire world is watching the Super Bowl. So you got media from Japan, uh, Mexico. I'm talking about media from all over the world. So that was, that's the biggest stage ever. Like, you know, Super Bowl, like, that's, that's the biggest stage ever. So that was a different feeling. That was different. That's amazing. Well, congrats. Congrats on all your success. But obviously, you being a star – at Clemson, or it sounds like obviously even before that, and then obviously you're an NFL star. How do you um, gauge the crowd around you, whether they're good people, maybe not good people? Did you have any experiences with that kind of stuff? I mean, uh, most definitely. I mean, college, like, I mean, you're going to get, you're going to get, wherever you go, everybody's not going to be nice, especially mm -hmm. the on it. And if you know they're gonna sometime to get person in your personal life. But I mean I was I blocked it out. I mean I could I could take anything. So they really didn't matter. But I mean it's you know, people are different and people really gonna express 
what they feel and what they want to say. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you get it. The good, the bad, the ugly. But you just, I guess, have to be a professional and keep it moving. No, totally. Did you, um, and again, this, you might have not experienced this, but do you have like family members or quote unquote friends start asking you for dough and things like that? Oh man, of course. Like, <laughs> it was like every, once you go to the NFL, everybody feel like they're entitled or, you know, um, people try to take advantage of your kindness and your weakness, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. I mean, you always can say no. But I'm unfortunately, I was one of those guys that couldn't say no. <laughs> but I mean, you definitely get it. Yeah, you it, it's you get targeted. Put it like that. Mm -hmm. And so, did you ever, at some point, did you ever learn to say no? You know what I mean? Yeah, after the fact. Huh. After it was over. Yeah, but with me, like, you would have to ask me more than one time. It was like I would do it, but. You got to remind me because, like, I wasn't that type of person. Like, okay, you ask, I need this right now. You better ask me again because if you don't, I'll forget. So, you know, other than my moms and my kids, then everything else was secondary. No, I understand. I understand. Okay, so you're, if my research is correct, you were three years St. Louis, right? Ram, right? right? And then... I read where in 2001 you signed as a free agent with Kansas City Chiefs, but what suffered I mean? a knee injury during preseason. Is that correct? No, uh, that's okay. Like when I was in St. Louis, I had messed up my sesame. That's when I split my sesame and bone in half. Okay. okay. But they didn't fix the problem correctly. Mm. Like I had surgery from the beginning, but they just put me in a boot. And so I tried to come back too fast and I thought I was here but it, when I got to Kansas City it was just like I was never the same so you know that, that it wasn't a good thing like I was overcompensating and, and my foot was still hurting and my knee began to hurt so it was like I wasn't really healthy in Kansas City no I feel you so are you saying that the was it the surgery that they did a botched surgery or was it just specifically you never had the time frame to recover correctly they didn't address the situation mm -hmm. like I didn't, I didn't I didn't have surgery until after I left Kansas City that's when I had surgery to fix the problem but before it be like after it happened they just put me like in a walking boot and they say it was healed on itself or whatever. So I know I should have had the surgery from the beginning. I feel you. Well, I know that was heartbreaking for you. I mean, it was, but I mean, it was like I adjusted. Like mm -hmm. I was, I wasn't one of those guys like was gonna cry and be all depressed about it and be like it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. so I had, I had established that from the beginning. Like you know, NFL means not for long. So, you know, it was, it was easy. I'm not going to say it was easy, easy for me to move on, but I know I had to move on. Right. You know, but I actually got healthy after, you know, I had the surgery. I actually got healthy and started back training again. And I was going to, and I was going to make a comeback to the NFL. And that's when I found out that I had a broken bone in my neck. <clears throat> Right. So that was that was hurtful. Mm -hmm. you know, trying to get back is knowing like, man, you could have, you know, you could have some could have happened to you seriously and you you didn't even know you had a broken bone in your neck. So that that that's what really hurt the most. And do you feel like it hurt the most because you felt like the individuals that should have been essentially watching you and double checking things that they weren't? I mean, I feel like, like every after every season, before the next season, you go through a physical. So, come on, man! If I'm taking a physical every year, so mm -hmm. you should you should know this. Like, you should be able to catch this issue. So, you know, once again, like even with my foot, you know, I was I wasn't really taken care of. Like, you know, but, mm -hmm. 
nothing I could do. Well, I feel like, you know, not to sound corny, but, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Maybe, you know, your injury of your, you know, knee leg was a sign to say, hey, double double check what's going on on your neck, you think? I pre- yeah, it, it definitely was because, like, on my comeback, that's how they discovered it when I took a physical. Mm-hmm. So it, it, was, it was a blessing in disguise, to be honest. I feel that. I feel that. So, you know, your career, before we get into post, um, post, well, I mean, obviously you still have a career, but you know what I mean? Post athletic career. So right. first question, and I, I'm doing this for my parents. What is it like to run down the Clemson Hill? Oh my God. It's, like I said, as a kid, that's, I've, and I envision myself doing that as a kid. Oh, like, it's amazing. But see, a lot of people don't know, you got to be careful running down the hill. Cause like a lot of people think you're just going straight down, but like in the middle of the hill, it's like a hump. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so don't think you're just gonna sprint down the hill. You're gonna be on your face. So like you gotta you gotta pace yourself and know that it's a hump in the middle of the of the hill, running down the hill. So it's like a serious hump. So you gotta you gotta know it. But once you do it a couple of times, you become a pro at it. Does anyone, do, do they give you kind of a heads up of, hey, guys, this it's not a straight down, there's a hump, be careful? Um, like, when you when you go on a visit, like, they they take you to the, they'll take you to the hill and let you experience it then. And, uh, I mean, you know, as a freshman, it's like, the older guys are like, okay, watch the hump. So, it's, it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're warned, pre-warned before, you know, okay. actually take place or whatever, so... That's a lot of talk about the hump, so you know. <laughs> that is too funny. It sounds like a uh, water slide. Worse than a water slide. <laughs> now, um, well, I mean, this could go into your college career, but I guess I was thinking of NFL. Was there anyone that you went to go play against that you were like, holy shit, I'm playing against blank? You know what I mean? That you can share? Deion Sanders. Like, wow. Like, like Deion Sanders. uh I wanted to meet Barry Sanders, but he had retired, so I never got a chance to meet, meet Deion Sanders. But other than that, it was basically Deion Sanders. Everybody else was like, all right, you, you know, it's the pros. It's the pros. So, but Deion Sanders was like, wow, like, yeah. <laughs> and, actually, and actually, like, he came up and like, yo, you a dog, man. Keep oh. riding. Like, you can play this game. So for Deion Sanders to come up to me and say that, it was like, okay. I'm meant to be here. Wow, that's very cool. Because I think he is um, the coolest. Man, he's a, he's a different guy. He's a different <laughs> That is so cool. Did you like, so basically, I mean, not to get like, I, I love to say corny, but not to get corny. So it's like when you have this individual that you like look up to, like come and say that to you, is that an out of body experience? Is that emotional? Well, it's not an out of body experience, but I had an out of out of body experience. It was like, it was just like, wow, yeah, like you know, he gave me a compliment for like the best player in the NFL to tell you you a dog. Like that's, it was eye opening. Like, okay, you can play this game. It was more like for me to figure out my potential in anything, like to know I had potential. No, I understand. Well, well, since you, I, I'm since you just dropped that you did have an out of body experience. Can you share what that was? Oh man, okay. So you know, I told you I had a neck, uh, a neck issue. Mm-hmm. In 2017, I was in a car accident. Mm-hmm. So I was paralyzed from the neck down for two years. So when I wrecked. I laid on side of the road for like two hours, like an hour and a half. And so it's like Because no one saw you? They it was like they saw me, the police were like people saw me, but they was they was uh they they was calling and said it was Rick, but they didn't have time to stop. Because they had, you know, they had to get to work or whatever. And crazy part about it, you know who Terry Glenn is, right? You know, me and him raked on the same day, but God bless, he passed away and everything. But um, so here I am laying in the car 
and I didn't think to think I was paralyzed. All I could do was shrug my shoulders. So my spirit left my body. I'm standing outside the car looking at myself. And God is beside me. You know, you can't see God physically, but the you spirit. Can spirit. So I'm like, hey, God, like, you gonna let me die like this? This is how you gonna let me die? And so now, that's an out of body experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and again, I usually ask kind of the unexplained towards the end of the interview. I've heard a lot of things. That I'm speechless. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was paralyzed with kids, man. And uh, they told me I'd never walk again. And I was in a power wheelchair. Uh, I got out the power wheelchair, worked myself up to the regular wheelchair. And probably, the wreck happened in 2017, so I was probably paralyzed from like 2017 up to 2020, 2019. And I started to get a feeling, and damn, I just kept going and 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 stayed, stayed, stayed uh, focused and and committed to my rehab. And you know, of course, God, you know, He, he brought me through it. So, you know, that not, that's the best thing that would happen to me in my life, to be honest. That's amazing. That's amazing. But, but what 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 it goes back to, like, it was crazy because I knew I had to have neck surgery, and I kept putting it off. I kept putting it off. Mm. So I always ask myself and I always think about, it, okay, do you think you would have had the surgery? Do you think you would have been paralyzed? So always, you know, go take a take a you know a step back and be like, okay, you know, you, do you think football caused this? No, because you know, you, you never know. Oh my goodness! So, rewind a little bit. So you're you're seeing yourself out of body in the car. You feel God beside you. You're like you're really gonna let me go like this. And then, what is your next memory? That, that's that's it. Like that's all I remember. To be honest, like that's that stuck. That stuck with me to the day. And like I said, I laid there and I just heard cars passing, and I was just. Somebody please stop. I just kept saying, somebody please stop. Somebody please stop. And then, like, okay, yeah, I do have experience. Like, actually, when the state trooper pulls up, he's like, I'm giving you a ticket for crossing the lane. I'm like, man, I'm laying here by dead. He talking about you about to give me a ticket? And he gave me a ticket. <laughs> Shut like, up. I promise you, like, my mom came for it. I mean, my mom came to the hospital. She had the ticket in her hand. I was going to court like a year and a half. Well, I, I never could go because I was paralyzed. I was, you know, I was on the court calendar like a year and a half to two years before they dropped the case. But here I am laying here dead, about half dead, blood everywhere, can't move. And his first words, I'm about to give you a ticket for crossing the center lane. It was crazy. I'll tell you, Tony, I... Not very few times am I speechless. I am so. Did he end up calling the ambulance as well? Um, I guess I'm curious as who, who got you to the hospital. Okay, well, what happened was a guy that worked for the city. He he was the one that stopped and helped me out of everybody. He stopped and helped me. So he called a he called nine one one. He stayed there with me. He called nine one one. It was just like. When the police got there, they was probably second on scene. That's what he said. Uh, you give, he's giving me a ticket, but he they wasn't the first on the scene. Even weirder. Yeah. Even weirder. Well, like I said, God bless you. What a story. God has been good to the kid. <laughs> so do you feel like you are, you know, now post – being able to walk and physical therapy, are you just like you were before the accident? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still trying to run. Can't you know? I can't run. Like I can't run. I can't I can't run yet. Uh, I can barely throw a football, probably like ten yards. So it's like, nah, I'm nowhere near. Like when people see me, they like I have. You was paralyzed, like you can't tell I was paralyzed, but mentally and like the strength of my body and like you know, I still go through a lot of pain, like 
nerve pain, stiffness, and stuff like that. So, now nah, I'm nowhere near, I'm nowhere near, you know, being independent as I was once was or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's still, still, a, still a work in progress. Progress, to be honest, man. Like that's that's my ultimate goal to be able to run again. Like, got to run again. Like, I feel you. I feel you. Oh, I believe you will. Oh, what's that? I believe you will. Just maybe, you know, show yourself some grace as far as how long, how far you've come. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Like, it took me a while to get there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm like, it's like, I'm hard on myself. I can say that I'm hard on myself. And I'm like a perfection. And I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care if I'm picking up paper. Like, I want to be the best at picking up paper. Like, I, I got to be the best. I try, I try my best to be the best or whatever. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? So no, I feel you. I, I have, like, came to the point where I'm proud of myself. You know what I'm saying? Because they told me I never walk again. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people gave up on me, even when I was in therapy. Like, you know, you can see the therapist giving up on you. So it's like, you, you, you notice like a lot of people give up on you. So you have to be up for yourself. So. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Well, like I said, I mean, what, what a story, what a story. Right. Prior so, to this, you know, horrific car accident that, you know, made you paralyzed. What was that from your, the NFL career, you know, essentially pushing you into retirement? Um, and before the accident, what was that t- time frame like? Because, um, you know, I study a lot of interviews of all different types of people, but um, specifically athletes. Um, you know, I know that it's so hard because, you know, regardless, you know, you before football, you were playing something. You were always athletic and part of your life. So when that ends, what is what is that like? Like. You're always around guys. Like you're always in the locker room. So that's the part you really miss. Like once once the locker room is done, it's done. So you really miss being part of the guys. Like those some of those guys like your friends. So that's the part for me that was hard, not being in the locker room, not being around genuine, real people, not, you know, being around someone that you know they want nothing from you. So for me, that was the that was that was my biggest thing, like trying to find something to play football. It was no, hard. I feel and, you. I mean, I still go for today. Like you always miss the locker room. Yeah. That's interesting. Just because I mean, I get it because it's like they are essentially experiencing the same thing you are. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm pretty sure because I mean, I've been in the locker room since I was in the seventh grade, <laughs> so. I mean, from the seventh grade until I'm in my twenties, and some guys like Tom Brady, he's been in the locker room his whole entire life. So I can imagine, you know, what made him want to come back to the game. But it's it's different. No matter like your body may be ready or you may be ready, but it's different. It's a different life when you used to being around all the fellas. You miss that. Like, I don't care what anybody, if somebody ever tell you that they don't, they lie. Like, they, they playing, they, they full of baloney. Because you always miss the locker room, man. Like, that's, that's the best thing about life, the locker room. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, I guess one of my last well, questions, and again, not that your story didn't outdo this, but um, I am fascinated by spirits and ghosts. And so I'm wondering from that accident or maybe even prior to that accident, um, have you ever seen a ghost or a spirit or felt something that you can share? Well, definitely I believe in ghosts, like coming up, like who's I mean, it's always around ghosts. Like <laughs> like seriously, like at my grandmother's house in the country, like like we believe in ghosts, like you know what I'm saying? Like we talked about it. We knew they was around. You know, you could hear things moving. Even like now, I still think I hear ghosts or whatever. So I do believe in the unnatural or the, you know, the 
other side of life that a lot of people never experience. So, yeah, I'm like, I believe in ghosts. Am I scared? Yes. <laughs> yes. But um, I have been among ghosts. Any, any like, standout stories of, like, actually, like, seeing one or no? I more felt one, but my oldest daughter, I think she had, like, two friends named Tiki and Bill Bill. And so I think it passed down from me to her. And she was always talking to her. It was crazy growing up because they would have her do stuff. I'm like, what made you do that? She's like, Tupi made me do that. Bill Bill made me do that. So it was like always been connected with like right. horror stories or spirits or ghosts or whatever. So, you know, it's, it's, it's normal. I'm not going to say it's normal, but, you know, like I said, I'm used to it. That's kind of I, I love I find that fascinating and amazing. <laughs> very, very, very cool. Just because I just believe, yeah, I just. I don't know. I mean, not to say that I've seen a bunch, but I just took kind of like you where I totally believe that they happen. And I know a portion of the country doesn't, but. I mean, real like a ghost is a spirit. So, I mean, spirits are real. Like, it's like different aura, different vibes, you know, atmosphere. So, you, you, you know, whether you don't want to believe it or not, like, that spirit or that uh, atmosphere or that vibe is different. That's a ghost. <laughs> no, I I'm I totally agree. Okay, last question before I let you give a shout out and explain your radio show and social media. Do you think the NFL that we see today is the same that you experienced? Is it the same game? Mm, most definitely not. I mean, it's bigger money. Uh, they're now picking up on more injuries and, you know, more concussions. But And I think the guys are, like, they're more prima donna. Like, they feel like they're entitled, you know. I don't feel like – it's different because, like, when I was in playing, like, man, you had, like, training camp, like, playing on the coast of the mill. You, you worked. And, you know, they're not cut back on, like, you can only be on the field this many hours. You can only be on the field that many hours. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a totally different game or whatever. I mean, the athletes should probably – some are probably faster and bigger, but, I mean, I don't think it's as rough as it was, you know, when I was there. I hear that. I hear that. Okay, so tell everybody about your radio show and where they can find it. All right, I'm on uh, – I got a radio show. It's called Our Power, hosted by uh, – Tony Horn, myself, like O U R, like our power. And uh, you can find me at Our Heart Radio, W D B R Media. And uh, every Sunday at 7 p.m., every Sunday at 7 p.m., catch me on Facebook as Tony Horn or catch me on Facebook at Our Power. And uh, same as Instagram and TikTok, Our Power, posted by me, Tony Horn. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Tony Horn, that's it. What do you think? What'd you think? Yeah, like, yeah, I got to have me back on the show. Yes. <laughs> well, like I said, I appreciate you, you know, agreeing to talk with me. You didn't know maybe what, what, where I was going to go, but I have enjoyed having you. And like I said, thank you so much for sharing all your experiences and like, God bless everything that you've been through. Thank you. And thank you for being like different other than just talking about, you know, sports. I mean, the ghost part killed. I mean, that was like fascinating. That was different. Like, so I think, you know, being authentic, you know what I'm saying? Like discussing the unexpectable, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Well, I